Ideas.com podcast. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of InvestorIdeas.com podcast. In today's podcast, being as there isn't much public or private news out during election times, we're just going to be doing a quick election roundup focusing on the many states that had cannabis-based ballots on their initiative. Uh, so first looking at New Jersey, where voters have approved a constitutional ballot initiative to legalize marijuana for adults 21 and over and establish a framework for marijuana regulation in the Garden State. And New Jersey now becomes the 12th state to enact legalization into law. It's a great day for New Jersey. After years of political inaction, voters have definitely approved marijuana legalization, said Steve Hawkins, the executive director of the Marijuana Policy Project, which was founded in 1995 and has played a central role in the 10 state-level legalization victories over the past eight years. The passage of this ballot measure positions North New Jersey to take lead in the Northeast and will push neighboring states like New York and Pennsylvania to take action on marijuana legalization, Hawkins added. This is a victory for social justice given to the black residents of New Jersey, who are 3.5 times more likely to be arrested for marijuana than white residents despite similar usage rates. Now, New Jersey was one of the five states that voted on marijuana reform ballot initiatives this November, and in Arizona, New Jersey, and Montana, there were also ballot initiatives to legalize marijuana for adults 21 and over, which were all passed. Now, the Chief Executive Officer Steve White of Harvest Health and Recreational Incorporated, trading on the CSE as HARV, commented on Arizona. The recreational initiative in Arizona represents a well-rounded approach to allow the expansion and access to cannabis in Arizona. We fully expect the implementation of Prop 207 will positively impact tax revenue and social justice in Arizona while strengthening employer protections and enhancing public safety. And as the largest operator of medical dispensaries in the state, we look forward to serving recreational customers under this new program. White then continued, the legalization of recreational cannabis continues to gain public support and becomes more mainstream as more people are positively affected directly themselves or know others who benefit from the availability of regulated and legal cannabis. We are proud to have played a role in the advancement of legal cannabis in our home state of Arizona, and we appreciate the support of state, local, and community officials and the ongoing efforts by the Arizona Department of Health Services to make our medical and recreational markets to the model of other markets across the country. Now, in Mississippi, voters also approved a constitutional ballot initiative to establish a medical marijuana program for patients with debilitating conditions, and Mississippi becomes the 36th state to enact a medical marijuana law. It's great to see that the tides of change are continuing to flow across the country, and now that they are come to Mississippi, said Steve Hawkins, the executive director of Marijuana Policy Project, which was founded in 1995, and has played a central role in the eight state-level legalization victories over the past eight years. As we saw in Utah in 2018, and as we see in Mississippi this year, medical marijuana can pass in any state in this country. And in South Dakota, voters also approved proposals to legalize both medical and recreational marijuana, a major shift after the state overwhelmingly rejected a medical pot measure four years ago. And in Oregon, voters made history by passing the first state law in the U.S. to decriminalize possession of hard drugs, including heroin, cocaine, and LSD. And the measure backed by criminal justice reform groups is aimed at diverting people from jails and prisons by treating possession as a citation and expanding access to treatment and recovery. The Oregon Drug Initiative will allow people arrested with small amounts of hard drugs to avoid going to trial and possible jail time by paying a $100 fine and attending an addiction recovery program. And the treatment centers will be funded by revenues from legalized marijuana, which was approved in Oregon several years ago. Today's victory is a landmark declaration that the time has come to stop criminalizing people for drug use, said Cassandra Frederick, the executive F director of the Drug Policy Alliance, which backed the measure. Now, Oregon voters also approved a measure making it the first state to legalize the therapeutic use of psychedelic mushrooms. So heading into this election, 11 states had legalized marijuana for adults 21 and over, and 34 states had legalized medical marijuana. So as I discussed yesterday, kind of depending, no matter who wins the election, uh, there was going to be some major changes for cannabis reform. And obviously, we've already seen that today um, with five new states improving their medical marijuana or recreational marijuana policies. And Oregon making a huge step forward. Obviously, they've always been a leader within uh, sort of liberalizing uh, the drug industry and making it a little bit more realistic and less criminalized, um, but now making a huge step forward by, again, decriminalizing possession of hard drugs. This has been something that's been talked about both in Canada as well as other countries moving forward, especially surrounding certain drugs, specifically 
um, LSD, psilocybin, any psychedelics in general. I also amend, commend them for uh, including heroin and cocaine, two of the most addictive substances that are out there today. And for just going with a different policy of having a $100 fund attending addiction recovery programs. Um, again, when you can pay attention to uh, Portugal and what they've done over the last few years with their drug reform policy, it has been a huge benefit to their country and to their social welfare. And I do think that this is going to be the policies that you start seeing get enacted either in state by state level moving forward into the future um, or again into a, possibly a federal level at least looking at Canada for psilocybin and LSD, that does seem to be something that's on the potential future. Um, and again, now that we also have another state, Oregon, who allowed for the legalization of therapeutic use of psychedelic mushrooms, does look like 2021 could be a year where you start having access to psilocybin, at least through a clinical basis, um, whether in the US or in Canada or in other parts of the world, this does seem to be a very likely outcome. Um, and I would expect some sort of drug policy reform within Canada within the next two years to match what's going on uh, to the neighbors to the south. And again, also in other parts of Europe, we're also seeing a little bit of this movement towards psilocybin access and access to LSD. So in general, uh, no matter how stressed out you are currently about the uncertainty of the election, as results are still coming in and will be coming in for the next three to four days, I'm assuming there's not going to be tons of cannabis public company news out in those next few days as most people will be glued to their TVs and focusing on the election results in general. Uh, but you can at least have some comfort knowing that in general for drug reform policy and for the cannabis industry as a whole, uh, a lot of really nice movements that are uh, only going to benefit this industry moving forward. And it does look like there's not going to be any steps backwards, as we have seen now that even states like Mississippi, which were looked at as a hard to win state, um, have now allowed for medical marijuana programs to be onboarded. So it does look like within the next couple of years, regardless of who is in office or what the direction of that office is intended to be, um, that at least some form of federal reform or at least safe banking access will be allowed within the next two years. And it does look like some new initiatives will probably be put on the next midterm election. That's all for today's podcast, and enjoy the rest of your day. That's all for today's podcast. Podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated CM certification. InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website, and this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.